Good day, poker peeps. My name is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a study with purpose action step from my book, Pre-Flop Online Poker. It comes from chapter 4.1 called Defending the Blinds. And in that chapter, I give you strategies to defend your blinds profitably with calls, uh, three bets facing different opponents, their open raising positions, all that stuff. I basically help you stop losing so much money out of the blinds. Now, also on the screen right here, we'll go over the, the step in a minute, but on the screen right here, I have one of my students prior to March. We started working in March. He sent me his database of 24,400 hands, and you can see he's a losing player at this time. One of his leaks that I discovered was uh, calling out of the blinds, and let me show you exactly how I found that. You're going to go to more filters, and I recommend that you follow along in Poker Tracker 4 right now to see if potentially you have this exact same leak of losing a ton of money when you're calling in the blinds. Actions and opportunities, pre-flop, posted the small and the big. Check them both, hit add to filter, and so it's going to show you hands only out of the blinds that you played. But let's also add another filter. This particular student's big issue was with calling two bets right here. Now let's take a look. Either blind posted, calling a two bet. Let's see what his total win rate is. Ah, negative 141, lost $147, mostly at 10, some 25 NL right here. Now, if he had folded every single big blind, didn't play a single one, didn't call any of them, even when he called ace 10 and jack 10 hands that normally people like calling with, right? And they think are profitable. If he folded all of them, he'd be at negative 100 big blinds. He'd be saving a ton of money. Down here in the small blind, if you folded all these, he'd be at negative 50, saving a ton of money right there too. So his calls is costing him extra money. Whereas if he just folded, he'd be saving money. So that's the first indication that he had this leak. Now the study with purpose task, use the Hold'em hand range visualizer to analyze the hands you call from the blinds. Now we could go through and just take a look at the various hands and maybe even sort them by hand strength to take a look and, and uh, start reviewing some of the ugliest looking hands, right? But I really enjoy this aspect of Poker Tracker 4. Let's go to the Hold'em hand range visualizer. Now this visualizes with green cells all the hands that you made specific plays with. So we want to see all the hands that this player called out of the blinds, and then we want to start diving in and analyzing the uh, the various hands. So we want to keep big blind and small blind checked. Uncheck the non-blind positions right here. Bam, this is V-pipping with all of these hands. We also want to see what, exactly when he calls that pre-flop two bet right here. Now, you might not have this as a heat map statistic, because I think I had to add it. I don't think it's part of the default. Hit the little wrench icon here, type in eh, two bet, and then you can see call preflop two bet. Double click it, it'll populate it at the bottom of the list. Hit OK, and then bam, you can select it as a heat map statistic. So for this particular player, these are all the hands that he called with out of the small blind and the big blind, or the big blind, uh, a, a preflop two bet. Now let's take a look at some of these, you know, oh. So the study with purpose, use the Hold'em hand range visualizer to analyze the hands that you call with out of the blinds. Look for questionable hands, hands that like just on the face of it, uh, like for example, queen five offsuit right here. Wow, we called with a queen five offsuit. In what world is that a good call? That is a terrible hand. It's probably a bottom 10 or 12% hand potentially. Uh, so review these questionable hands, review them, find and record your mistakes and work to not repeat them. So we're gonna take a look at a few different hands right here. Let's start with that queen five offsuit. So you're just gonna click it and it's gonna show you all the times that you called. So at 25 NL, he lost $5 or 20 big blinds with a queen five. And look at that board, didn't even have a pair here. What happened at this point? So open raise to three big blinds, a call, and then a hero ends up calling as well. Over calling now, yeah, sure, you might think you're getting a good price and it costs two big blinds, but queen five offsuit has a very, very low likelihood of taking this pot down, of winning it for value or potentially bluffing at some point versus a, the open raiser who you don't even, the HUD hasn't even popped up. You don't know anything about this player. Queen five off is not, not a good hand to be defending with, just not strong enough. It's not even suited, it doesn't even have flush potential. If you hit a king on the board, you're basically just gonna be checking it down, maybe calling a few bets, hoping to get to showdown pretty cheap and hoping your queen wins, right? But he calls right here. Now, flopping the gut shot, the five doesn't do anything for you. But look at that, everybody checks around. So the seven hits, 
doesn't necessarily help anybody, but I like how Hero decides to put out a bet. Now it's less than half pot. If you're going to bluff, bluff at greater than 50% pot, right? Show them you mean business. Imagine you had a 10. Are you really just gonna bet less than half pot? Or are you gonna hope that somebody has a nine or a seven and is willing to pay 55%, 60% pot? Probably a little bit more. Your bluff needs to tell a convincing story. He calls. And then right there, the ace hits. Now, is that really a scare card for your opponent? I mean, the goal right here with this bet is to get him to fold. And I like the size of the bet. But maybe that's not a scare card if he called with a nine or an eight, but you bet on the turn. He's not going to put you on an ace. He's going to think his pair of nines or maybe an eight is good. So he called. Oh, jack seven, two pair. He ended up having. So he had a terrible open raising hand. Not terrible. He had fold equity on his side open raising not a bad play on his part but your call um and then the small bet size on the turn wasn't good enough to to win that pot for sure so that's a queen five offsuit let's take a look at another questionable hand right here look at that king three offsuit 25 nl lost eight big blinds with this one a min open raise okay and then a call oh man so first off king three offsuit it's just as bad as a queen five right so we can say like you're making that same kind of a mistake again king three off now uh just a terrible hand to be calling with now you also did not didn't complete the action from the small blind with a three better still to act so your call right here what that does is you're telling villain six, who's a loose aggressive 27, 23, he should actually be color coded orange because he's a lag player, right? Uh, also three bets at 12% right here. You're telling him that you are super weak because you just called. If you had aces, kings, ace, king, pocket, queens, jacks, you probably would have three bet right now. So he knows that you're super weak. This guy looking possibly loose aggressive, open raised, a min raise from the cutoff. Wow, or from the button, I mean to say. Wow, he's got a really wide range. There's a great opportunity for a three-bet squeeze to just take the pot down right now. And he does it. He makes it only eight big blinds. I would have made it a little bit bigger on his behalf just to convince you more to fold, right? But then you get a call, and then you call as well. So tell me, king three offsuit, first off, you thought it was worth two big blinds to enter the pot out of position against two other players. Okay, two big blinds. I can't defend that, but I can see why you would make that call. But is it worth eight big blinds and additional six pre-flop to put yourself out of position against two lags with a crappy king? Eight big blinds? No, it's not. So calling a three bet out of position versus two others just giving way too much value to your opponent so you can see we've just reviewed two hands we found four different pretty big mistakes here flop comes does not help you one bit you check 19 big blind c bet pretty hefty c bet right there fold and of course you're going to fold i love the fold that's the best play of this hand right here let's take a look here let's look at a suited hand king eight suited so at this point when you're going through your hands you see all this stuff labeled green of course ace 10 off ace jack ace nine suited jack nine suited nine eight suited those all make sense as calling hands all these pocket pairs and stuff i wouldn't take the time to review those hands unless you happen to like click on nines and you see a super big losing hand or something maybe to review just to see if you made mistakes but take a look at those hands that people would say are just questionable hands maybe you just shouldn't play in the first place just due to the hand strength itself now king eight suit isn't terrible it depends on kind of what you are uh what you are uh the bet size you're facing the opponent you're facing and stuff but look what happened with a king eight suited losing a full stack 104 big blinds here we've got to review this hand so three big blind open raise from a loose semi loose aggressive player fold fold and then you call okay i don't necessarily fault the call he c bets a lot on the flop but he's honest on the turn maybe you have the plan of ch calling most flops especially if you hit some kind of a pair or a draw when he checks the turn you come out firing on the river if you call with a plan for the future with a hand like this i can't fault that right there but just in general a king eight suited you only have flush potential your top pair of potential is okay, but you don't have that great of a kicker as well. And then no straight potential. I would be fine if you just folded this hand. Jack 4-4, four, four, uh, paired board, flush draw. Okay, not bad. Three big blinds, just a half pot. Okay, 
I'm down with the raise right here. Uh, you made it pretty darn hefty. You're telling him I, a lot of opponents are going to see a raise this big as a bluff. Now, if you had a four, ace four, uh, five, four, would you really make it five X your bet? You probably wouldn't. You'd probably be raising smaller, two and a half to three times his bet. You'd be making it roughly eight, nine big blinds right around there to get value, to convince him to call with an overpair, and you've got that trip force for max value. When you make it so big, a lot of times it feels like a bluff. Not always, but feels like it. And you're doing it against a player who can easily fold. Um, uh, I think I think you're overpaying for your bluff right now. I think nine big blinds, even 10, would have been much better, and you could have saved five big blinds here. And he ends up calling. That should be alarm bells. He's not scared on this paired board. He either has an overpair, maybe even an ace-jack kind of hand, king-jack as well, who just doesn't believe you have a four, right? 26 big blinds. You're betting big. You're leaving yourself 67 big blinds behind against a player who obviously likes his hand. At this point, I would prefer a smaller bet. I know you're trying to get max value, not max value. You're trying to make it look like you have a four and you're going for max value right here, but it's going to feel suspicious. And you're a 28, 23 player. I guarantee this player, if you look at his stats, he uses a HUD. He knows you're a loose, aggressive player. Maybe he knows that you're capable of donk betting and check raising as bluffs. So overpaying for bluffs and fitting into your lag spewy style. So if he thinks of you in 2823, yes, you are a lag and you probably do spew chips. He thinks of you that way. He's not going to believe you. His pocket ace, his pocket king's ace jack is probably going to call, thinking that you are just on some kind of a draw. You have a weak hand. Oh, he likes his hand. He came over the top right here. And then with just an eight, with just a flush draw, not even the nut flush draw on a paired board, you could already be beat by pocket jacks, even pocket eights. I know there's only one of those possible because you have one and one on the board, but... I mean, there's so much stuff that's going to shove here. I really, I highly doubt he's reshoving as just a bluff against you right now. But then you call, you need 29% equity, but maybe you're getting roughly that right here. If we think about a flush draw plus an eight, if he doesn't have an eight, uh, plus the three kings, maybe you do have some outs to 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 a hand that can beat his over pair right now. So you're probably getting roughly the right amount of money or right odds to be making this call. But I hate it. You put yourself in a bad spot by calling preflop with such an underwhelming hand. A five, then the nine hits. And of course, he turns over pocket aces. There's no way you're getting that to fold. Somebody who's willing to commit a C bet and then call 5x their bet, they're just not scared of you. The eight's not going to scare them off uh, the hand at all. So just overpaying for your bluffs and overcommitting at a spot when it's just not going to work, you know? All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. So definitely, if you haven't done so already, filter through your database, take a look at your profitability when calling two bets. And if you see really high negative numbers, greater than negative 50 in the small blind, greater than negative 100 in the big blind, definitely hit up the Hold'em Hand Range Visualizer, start analyzing hands, finding your mistakes, and then work on the felt to not repeat those mistakes. All right, thank you so much. Please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next video.